This video is brought to you by Adam Sharp School. Adam Sharp School hosts one of the largest catalog for iOS development videos, and it is trusted by 150 plus companies, including Apple, Comcast, JP Morgan Chase. A lot of my students work with these amazing companies and check out see these amazing reviews from some of my students. I mean, in reality, there are like 16,000 plus reviews, but you can definitely check out a few of them over here. So on Adam Sharp School, you can find a list of a lot of different courses. You can get those courses by buying individual course, and you can see the list over here. I mean, this is just a crazy list because it's, it just has so many different courses available, full stack iOS development using Swift and Vapor, MV design pattern, you know, Swift data bootcamp, testament development, create ML, reality kit, and a lot more. So definitely check out these courses. You can buy them individually, or you can simply go ahead and sign up for the membership. That is what most people do. 22 comprehensive courses, over 130 hours of content, and I keep adding more videos, more tutorial, and more courses. Another thing to keep in mind are the workshops. Now these are live workshops hosted over Zoom and these are amazing workshops because these are very hands-on workshops. It's not like I'm gonna show you some slides. We're gonna dive into the code. We're gonna check out the code. We're gonna run it and you will get a, get a GitHub repository with all the code and I will be every step of the way helping you out, figure out all the problems. So our next workshop is on introduction to server side surf using vapor and you can see the pricing very accessible only fifty dollar for a workshop then we have a swift data fundamentals workshop and we also have testing workshop so definitely check out these resources on azamsharp.school now let's go back to the video now let's go ahead and see that how we can expose different events from our reminder cell view so that the caller, the person who is using Reminder Cell View, can take actions. But before we do that, let's hop over to Reminder Cell View and take a look at a couple of different things because we also need to implement one of the other things that we didn't. So we can see the stack view over here. What I'm going to do is add a spacer and I will add the info image. Okay, so let's go ahead and add the info image. And this is the this image right there. If you look at your actual reminders application, you will be able to see that this particular info image or info icon appears when you select the reminder. So I have to basically tap somewhere over here to activate the info. Right now it's activated, that's fine, but eventually we'll see that it's only activated when we are making sure that we click on the particular reminder. Okay, so this looks pretty good now. Let's go ahead and see what else we can do. Uh, since we want to make sure that we are clicking on the whole thing, it means that I have to select all of it, go at the bottom and set the content shape. The reason that I'm setting the content shape is that I want the whole row, the whole thing, the cell to be clickable. So I'm just going to set the content shape to be rectangle. Okay. Now we need to expose different events from our reminder cell view. One of the ways that you can do that is just by writing different closures. We can go ahead and write a closure for saying on check checkbox, you know, on check changed. That can be one of them. Uh, we can go ahead and write another one on reminder select or on select. That's also fine, right? And what else? We can have show detail, I think. So we can say on show detail or on detail. But this is going to end up with multiple closures. What we can do over here is we can minimize this. And instead of creating multiple closures, what we can do is we can create an enum to represent all the different actions that we are going to be firing. So I'm gonna go over here 
and create an enum. Now you can create this enum outside, that's also fine. Uh, let's go ahead and create it outside over here, enum. And we will call it reminder cell events because these will be different kind of events which are basically closures that will be fired. The first one will be on info, meaning if you basically click on this info button right there. We will do something, so that's why I'm just gonna say on info. And then we will have on check changed, on check change. And we're gonna pass in the reminder for which you have uh, clicked the checkbox. Again, we're gonna say show detail. Maybe we want to show the detail of the reminder. And that is, we're gonna pass in the reminder, all right? Okay, so on info, we have a couple of different things on show detail. I think show detail is more like when you actually select this thing. So when you tap on the reminder one over here, it's gonna pass in show detail. You can call it on select also. I think that's fine also, so on select. And now instead of, we can see that instead of having multiple closures, we will only create one closure. But what should we call that? You can call it on select, but that kind of messes up the meaning because we already have the on select. So on reminder select, or I can simply call it on event, and that's it. All right, some sort of an event is gonna happen. This is going to give us the reminder cell events and void. So this is much better approach because we ended up not creating multiple closures, like three or four different closures, we didn't do that. Now, if I scroll at the bottom, you can see that I'm missing on event. So let's go ahead and do on event. And we don't really care that much over here because this is just for Xcode preview. So we're just really not gonna handle it. Okay. Okay, we know that we're still missing it on the calling side. You can see on the reminder list view, we still need to pass in the on event so that the reminder list view can handle all of those different things. But before we do that, let's go ahead and see that where would we do this stuff? Like what will happen if we click on the checkbox. So I believe this is the checkbox, right? So what should we do when we check the checkbox? Well, we definitely should toggle. So that's what we're doing over here. But apart from the toggle, we will call some sort of a event. And we also need to make sure that we have access to the event, which is on event. So I'm just gonna go ahead and have, say on event. And what type of event it is? On check change. Okay, yes, it is on check change. And we will simply pass in the reminder. Okay, so that one is done, easy. The next one would be for when we are cl clicking or tapping on the info. So we just added the info image right there. I'm just gonna say on tap gesture. Yeah, again, it will be on event. And the event will be on info when we click on the info. Okay. So that is also fine. I think that is also done. That is fine. And when we click on the whole thing, meaning this whole H stack, which is representing the everything, then we should also do something. So I'm just gonna say on tab gesture, and again on event, and the event will be on select. And select what? Well, select the reminder. So this particular event is going to fire when you actually tap on the reminder label or anything in that reminder cell row. So that looks fine. If you build the application, it's not really going to work because now the reminder, reminder cell view requires that you need to pass in the event, which as you can see that we are not passing. So let's go ahead and pass in something, okay? Since this is the last argument is our closure, we can simply go ahead and use over here, which is the trailing closure. We will get the event. We can go ahead and look at the event. And based on the cases, we have a case for uh, basically on select, on info, on check change. We will get the reminder. This is when you actually selected it, meaning you probably clicked on or tapped on the reminder name. So that is going to be handled. 
Then we have the on check change for the reminder. I think we have to say let over here. So let's go ahead and put let. On check change event is going to get fired whenever obviously we are changing the checkbox. So let's just go ahead and copy this over here so we know that this is the one that's getting fired. This will be replaced eventually with some actual code, but right now we're just adding placeholders. On info, okay. On info is when you actually check mark when you click on the on info button or the icon. So I'm just going to say on info. Okay. And over here, just for time being, just going to select on select. All right. Great. Let's go ahead and run it and see if it works or not. Okay. So I already have a list called yellow list. And now I have this reminder. Now let's go ahead and do the check mark. Okay, you can see right there on the console that on check change is getting fired. If I check it again, on check change is getting fired. So that looks like it's working correctly. What if I click on the in info or tap on the info? On info is getting fired. That is awesome too. And if I click on anywhere in this thing, meaning this portion, if I don't click on the info and I don't click on the checkbox, then the on select is getting fired. So looks like everything is working pretty good. I mean, I think we have made sure that all of this is working in a nice fashion. So what should we work on next? Well, the first thing we should work on probably at this point will be to make sure that when you call on check change, that particular reminder is actually mark for change, meaning that reminder is added or is basically saying that, okay, I have been updated. So let's go ahead and work that uh, on that in the next lecture.